I've made this video because there are so many videos out there like this that when I watch them, I think, I don't need any of this stuff. And this is clearly just an Amazon Prime Day affiliate cash grab. Whilst I will be making up a kit for your convenience, I honestly couldn't care less if the links are clicked or not because uh, affiliate marketing is not really my game and I also don't rely on YouTube for a living. As the title says, it's stuff that either didn't exist when I first started or it's stuff that I wish I'd prioritized much earlier and I just hope you find this list um, helpful and entertaining. These are buy them once and you'll be sorted for a long time kind of products and definitely let me know which products you think I missed and uh, you know down in the comments and I will see you down there. As ever, I've timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip to the bits that you want, no problem at all. I'm also on the long winding path to 100,000 subscribers and it would really make my day if you could just reach down and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It's, um, you know, puts a smile on my face, helps the channel and I appreciate it in advance. I thank you. These videos are also not sponsored content but they are made possible by my Patreon backers. Any funds from Patreon I put back into the channel to buy gear and then I give the gear to my backers via the way of a giveaway. If that's of interest, it's really inexpensive. It's just the cost of a cup of coffee per month and um, it just really helps the channel. Um, details below. First up is a product that I reviewed recently and I've been absolutely blown away by. And that's the Tascam DR10L Pro portable recorder and lav mic system. The reason this is on the list is because we video guys frequently have to take care of the audio side of things as well as video. And this is the very best sounding lav mic I've heard. And that comes from, you know, someone who is from an audio background. It records in 32-bit float. It's obviously off camera, so it doesn't have anything to do with the crappy preamps or AD converters that cameras have. It has insane battery life, and that's just the headline features. I wasn't expecting to be so blown away by this, but you know, it was one of those reviews where I struggled to find cons, full stop. Anyway, the Tascam DR10L Pro, incredible. If you're thinking, oh, I need multiple channels, well, just, you know, buy multiple versions because it's a bargain. Moving on. Next, we have the very best camera bag that I've ever used, and that is the Tenba Cinelux 21. It comes in a few different styles and sizes. I like the basic doctor's bag type, but you can get a backpack and a roller version. It's great because you can snugly carry your entire camera rig completely set up. You turn up to a job and just lift it out and go. I've tried so many other bags over the years, backpacks, shoulder style bags, that all promise to be great and offer fast access to your gear and be non-awkward to use. But are they really? Hand on heart? Next we have the best ND filter that I've ever used, and of course that is H&Y's Revo Ring. If you're not familiar with the Revo Ring series, they are not just any old variable ND, but one that uses an aperture design to work with a range of different filter thread sizes. I use the 67 to 82 millimeter version, which covers all of my lenses except for one, which is my ancient Helios 44-2. I hear people saying that the Polar Pro Peter McKinnon ND filter is the best, and based on what? It's expensive, sure, it's pretty, absolutely. But at the end of the day, what matters way more to me is fast workflow. And those filters are still just fixed filter thread sizes. This means that without owning multiple versions of the Polar Pro, switching it between lenses means unscrewing it from one and screwing it onto the next. A process that's just laughably fast with the Revo Ring and that's not even going into the issue of switching to lenses with different filter thread sizes or non-issue in the Revo Ring's case. Next we have a microphone and it's not the Shure SM7B. As video guys, it's really not spoken about enough how much crossover there is between the audio and video side of things. And sooner or later, I guarantee you'll need a quality microphone. In my opinion, a condenser mic is the best, fullest frequency, most versatile option, and luckily, there are a sea of great options for non-astronomical prices. There's the Lewitt Ray, which monitors your distance from the mic and adjusts the bass response accordingly. Super smart and inexpensive. I love the Audio-Technica AT4033A, which just sounds amazing and you can pick up a bargain used, and I would definitely recommend this over buying a new one. The AKG C214 is also an amazing sounding microphone for 
a far too low price. Again, particularly if you can find a good used copy. Currently, I'm using a combination of the Warm Audio WA47, which I've got just up here for this shot. And then when I'm doing voiceover stuff at my desk, I use the AKG C414. But to be honest, you know, any of the aforementioned uh, microphones, they're gonna be stellar and I can highly recommend. Next, we have a tripod and I can just hear the comments coming in of, no way, video guys need tripods. Who would have thought it? Half you idiot. However, the reason this made it onto my list is because I neglected kind of upgrading to a really high-end tripod for just too long. On reflection, I regretted not getting a great one sooner, and I would recommend buying one that's better and more sturdy than you think you need, because camera rigs often grow in size as you progress, and it sucks to buy gear multiple times. The tripod I'm referring to, of course, is the Surrey SVS75 that I picked up recently, and it's so good. It's a single stage tripod, meaning only one clasp per leg to raise or lower it. Surrey will never say this, but it's basically inspired by the unbelievable Sackler Flowtex series of tripods, but for a quarter of the price. Still not cheap, but definitely a bargain compared to the real thing. And I would definitely recommend this and, um, you know, watch my review as well, because, you know, I go deep. You know, I mentioned the crossover between audio and video and the need to have gear and the skills to be able to do both well. Well, that's what we have next. It's the fantastic portable recorders from Tascam, the Porter Capture X6 and X8. I own the bigger X8 because I like the larger screen and having more inputs, but also because the X6 hadn't been released when I wanted to upgrade. So derp. I reviewed the X8, of course, and it was another one of those reviews where I really couldn't find many cons at all. They've both got lots of inputs, great screens, and record in 32-bit float. The other thing to bear in mind is that lots of audio guys for production companies use the sound devices Mix Pre 6.2, which has eerily similar specs to the X8, but the X8 is just one third of the price. These are an easy recommendation. Next, we have video lights that are powerful, but quiet, and I have some recommendations. My main key light is the Aperture 600D, which I'm using just here, because, you guessed it, powerful, quiet. However, I reviewed a few of the Zhiyun range, namely the B300, the B500, and the G300, that really opened my eyes to the crazy value that's available now, and all of them are ridiculously bright and quiet, especially the B500, which is almost as bright as my Aperture 600D, but costing around 40% less. The other video light company worth a mention is Nanlite, of which I've not yet tried, but God, looking at the specs, the power to price ratio is just kind of unbelievable. So you know what, I, I will be testing them, so you know, subscribe. Next, an easy security recommendation, and that's to pick up some AirTags or equivalent. They're not particularly expensive, and I've just picked up a pack of four and I've put them in everything. I've been lucky enough not to have had any gear stolen, but I do just feel better having these in place. Uh, I got engraved ones. You definitely don't need engraved ones. In fact, my advice is just to go and on Amazon. You can save yourself something like 20 to 30% by not having them engraved. I just thought, you know, I'm an idiot. I'm gonna do it. Um, I just wish these were around when I first started. Next, we're talking diffusion because video lighting needs really good diffusion and really it's the secret to kind of unlocking uh, really pretty, flattering looking light for your videography. Now, this may seem really obvious to you, but my main reason for insisting this was in the video is to really stress and drive home how you really don't need to spend a fortune buying the brand leader's diffusion options. Personally, I like the Light Dome style of diffuser, but rather than go with Aperture's current Light Dome 3, which costs this much, I would say you can really cheap out, but not really, by going for a similar dome from Godox for this much, or one from Niwa for this much. Even the one from Zheyun is great, and that's this much. Next we have gimbals, and there's a definite theme building. I seem to love gear that's not made by the brand leader, because, you know, it consequently almost always doesn't cost as much, but does everything you need it to. That's my bag, apparently, and my non-brand leader recommendation in this case is Zheyun, 
again. And I promise this is not sponsored by Zheyun. I've been using their Weeble gimbals for years now and they work so well, admittedly, with less bells and whistles, but cost quite a bit less than the equivalent DJI gimbals. The Weeble range is just a really easy and relatively inexpensive way to get yourself off tripods or sliders and moving wherever you want to. And for many people, this is just such a gateway piece of gear to next level looking footage. I recommend. Finally, we have something that for some reason I hesitated buying for so long, and that's flat lays with different textures and you know backgrounds to kind of add interest to your content. I think one of the reasons I hesitated was when searching for these, I just found so many examples that were just way overpriced if I'm honest and so I just I didn't get it but let me tell you these are such a great investment if you do things like uh, top-down photography or videography uh, product videography or photography or anything like that I'd recommend measuring up beforehand and keep your eyes peeled for those companies selling overpriced ones initially I got a set with eight different surfaces from Amazon for around 24 pounds which is 29 dollars and euros at the time of filming. And then I topped it up with another six later on and I love them. As you can see, they look really good. It's just a matter of choosing the one that suits what you're doing. In my opinion, an awesome investment for very little cash. Anyway, that's it for now. Stuff that either didn't exist when I first started or things that I just should have prioritized way earlier on. And I just hope you found my list interesting and entertaining. What did I miss? What should I have added? Definitely let me know and I'll see you in the comments section. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography and audio of which the algorithm has chosen this video for you to watch next. And the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you.